Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another series. Um, the seven stages of grief. So, some of you may be wondering, why are we talking about this? We've already talked about the five stages. What's the difference? Both are surrounding loss, yes. One major difference between the two, though. That a lot of people, there's a reason people know about the five stages way more than the seven. The seven stages of grief are actually referring to... They're both referring to loss, but the difference is one's referring to the death of someone, so a life loss, where the other is referring to a relationship loss. And depending on what kind of relationship you're in depends on how it's approached. If it's a loss you didn't want, you're bound to hit these seven. But if it's one that you desire, you'll pretty much skip them the middle ones and go from the first one to the last one in an instant. So I'm just, unlike the five stages, I'm just going to go through all of them in one video since basically most of them we talked about. In fact, all the middle ones, the five middle ones are the same. It's the first and the last, it's, it's the bridge that makes it different. Like the first, for example, shock. The first phase of the seven is shock because, I mean, if you're not wanting it to happen, you're going to be taken aback by it. You'll get an extremely large blow from it, um, and it'll lead to the next of the stages, most of them being pretty much the same as the five. So I'm not going to go thoroughly through it since, once again, we've already talked about the five stages. Um, <clears throat> it's the same concept, bargain, like you start with anguish or anger. Um, it, it leads to like, I'm not, this is not particular order, obviously, but uh, bargaining, depression, um, well, I've been through it before. Basically the five stages of grief, including the acceptance, except here's one tiny difference. Both of the stages end in acceptance, so outside of the shock, what's the difference? Well... At this point in my life, I've been through both the seven and the five. Not as much as most people can, but I have been through both. And I can definitely confirm shock, easily noticeable, even from yourself. A lot of it's subconscious, but that particular um, one thing, not that hard for you to miss. Of course, the frustration, that goes like trying to deny it, trying to deny it's actually going on and then getting frustrated about it. Um, approaching the matter like, hey, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what if we did all this, blah, 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 like all that, front, and you're just like watching it go down in the other direction you're really hoping. Speaking of, that's the other different one, hope. Hope is the second difference between the five and the seven. Hope is the one that comes right before the last two stages of the seven stages of grief. And I've been through it. Basically what it is is after, so when you start getting anguish and you see just a slight glimmer of possibility, you'll aim for that tiny flicker of possibility. Even if you know full well it's most likely not going to be the case, you still aim for it. That's that hope factor. And once the breakup, or if you're married, divorce, once those happen, that hope is shattered. And you go into this state of depression, of what do I do now? I'm lost. And after that, give it enough time and the acceptance phase finally comes except it's not acceptance directly this time because sure you're accepting the fact that it's happening it's going to happen but accepting it doesn't fully help you just push forward not always at least and the reason i know that it's not because of my own experiences directly i mean it is but it's not um, is that, or should I say my own experience, for me that 
this, I've only had to go through these seven stages once in my life. Um, that last one, it's not just a simple case of acceptance. You need also a case of relief. That's why in the stage itself, it's not called acceptance. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I think it's like perseverance, something like that. The idea of the last phase of the seven stages is more the idea that sure, you're accepting of it, now do something for yourself so you can move on. And that, in the seven, it's in my opinion harder to get to that last stage than it is for the five. Now maybe this is just because there are many things I don't mourn for. When I see someone pass away, I'll still go through those five, but it'll be like minor. Very minor compared to other people. And for the five stages, once you accept it, you're like, okay. And it'll drop your mind very easily, depending on how close you are to the person. But the seven? it's much, much, much more difficult to just go, okay, and then move on. You need something to help you do it. I mean, because one difference, depending on the kind of relationship you had with the person, um, between five and seven is that during the seven stages, most of the time when you're able to make it to the end of the stages, someone encourages you that you'll be okay, you'll find your way. No rhyme intended, I just realized I said that. Um, but the five, well, they're gone, they're deceased. You can't resurrect the dead. I mean, Frankenstein tried, look what happened to that. Created a monster. Yeah, no, Frankenstein is not actually the name of the monster. I mean, it is, but it's not. The title's referring to the doctor. But I digress. Um, that's the major difference why seven refers to relationships and not the loss of a loved one like, who deceased. It's an interesting concept to think about in my mind just because of those, t those slight two mental differences can make a drastic change. But it also makes sense why. There's a reason in a lot of circumstances where people start parting ways, they'll ask, will I ever see you again? Or will we ever speak again? When relationships end, but they end on a good note, you usually have that asking a lot. Does it happen? Sometimes. Sometimes not. Really depends on the other person as well. However, what it is and unfortunately as down as both these things are I do find the difference very intriguing admittedly this is not what I was originally going to talk about today but it's something that came to my mind while in conversation with someone I actually don't remember who because bear in mind I do it, it was at work it was someone at work that's all I can say I was discussing something with them and they brought up the Kubler-Ross model, five stages of grief. And just from that one thing alone, I started thinking about those two differences. The two stages that differenced, or that made a difference between the Kubler-Ross model and the seven stages of grief in reference to relationships. Now bear in mind, seven stages also talk about Yes, it's more notable for those kind of things, but if you have a very specific type of mind, it can also be anybody who you're connected to. Literally anyone. A friend. Maybe even family. If you end up having to disconnect yourself from a family member, it could be for about that too. Um, say, I don't know. Say somehow you end up distancing yourself from your parents because of some kind of argument and it ends up getting to a point where, bear in mind this is hypothetical, I, from what I understand, this almost never happens. Uh, as far as I know, maybe it has happened to you, maybe it hasn't, I don't, I don't know. The 
this is very hypothetical. You get kicked out and are told to never return. They want it, nothing to do with you, something like that. Um, you're going to start going through those seven stages. You won't accept it at first. They're your parents. I mean, come on. The people who look after you for a blank amount of time and you're going to instantly believe they want you out. Come on. There are some exceptions to that statement, by the way. I mean, there are some places where I know this is kind of unfortunately a common thread. In which case, I hate seeing that kind of concept, but it is true. So, some places is not so hypothetical, but that's, it's supposed to be a hypothetical. Bear that in mind. Next, you go through the normal stages of grief until you finally reach upon, they'll reach out, maybe just to check to make sure you got to at least a safe point, and you're like, glimmer of hope. Wait, maybe they'll welcome you back for a little bit. You go back, and nothing's different in person. And that's where the whole downfall aspect before the accepting and reassurance aspect comes into play. It's the same concept, mental concept. That's why it, when you talk, when people talk, rarely talk about the seven stages of grief, it's why they don't have a very specific category for what it's for, because that particular uh, set of stages works for losing almost anything and anyone outside of death. I don't know. It's an interesting concept for me to think on. But either way, I'm actually going to leave this here. Thanks for tuning in the video, guys. Uh, if you liked it, make sure to give the video a like. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you aren't interested in anything psychological kind of like this, quick click on this site, you'll find a lot of discussion rants. A vast majority of them are psychological based. Others are kind of like, well, as the title says, discussions and rants. <laughs> um, if this isn't quite uh, your cup of tea though plenty of other content on the channel why not click the link on this side and you might find something you enjoy there in the meantime though i'm gonna head off thanks again for tuning into this video guys and we'll see you guys in another one bye bye